Welcome to Studio Suits TV. As always, you know I'm your host, Grandmaster. And today, I they can bring you the trends and updates from Qatar. Yes, I they come just to you from Twitter, IG, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and every single platform. As always, you know, Studio Suits TV, we they continue to give you content updates, content recreation. We they do everything to make you see joy and pleasure. Make you not go nowhere. Just after this break, I'll be right back with the info. Welcome back from the commercial break. So today, my player profile, I they give you the maestro, Abedi Pele. Abedi, are you? Born 5th November 1964, known professionally as Abedi Pele. Is a Ghanaian former professional footballer who played as an attacking midfielder and served as the captain of the Ghana national team. He is regarded as one of the greatest African footballers of all time. He played in several European clubs and found his name in the French League 1 with Lille and Marseille. The latter, where he won the UEFA Champions League in 1993, among other titles, is widely regarded as one of the greatest players of his generation. Okay, so make I give you small and brief history about the Abedi Pele Ayu in early life. Abedi Ayu was born into a family in the town of Kibi and grew up in the town of Domi at the northern outskirts of the city of Accra, where he attended Ghana Senior High School in Tamale and was given the nickname Pele due to his ability in football, which evoked comparison to the Brazilian athlete that the legendary Pele. So this be how he starts in club career was one of the first African players to make an impact on European club football. Abedi Pele's nomadic career began with Real Tamale United in Ghana in 1978. He left Ghana after the 1982 African Cup of Nations to join Al Saad, Al Saad in Qatar for a fee of $1,000, that would be in transfer fee at that time. After a short spell with FC Zurich, he returned to Ghana but after both Kotoko and Hart failed to sign him, he joined AS Dragons, FC de Olome in Benin. He would later return to Ghana and play for Real Tamale United for one season. He began his career in Europe with French side Chamos Noit, subsequently joining Marseille before transferring to Lille on loan. At club level, he was a key figure in Marseille's dominance of the French league, resulting in four league championships and two European Cup final appearances. At Marseille, he was a member of the team's magical trio, along with Jean-Pierre Papin and Chris Waddell, spearheading perhaps Europe's strongest league side of early 1990s. Including a European Cup final defeat in 1991, Abedi was the only remaining member of the trio, still with the side when Marseille defeated Milan in 1993, Champions League final in Munich. He later joined Lyon after his loan spell at Lille. He also played for Torino of Italy and rounded out his European career in 1860 Munich. Abedi went on to sign a two-year contract with Al Ain in the United Arab Emirates and was nominated one of the best foreign players to play in the UAE League. So this be brief history about Abedi in early life. Let's get a bit personal. Abedi is the brother of Kwame and Sola Ayu, ex House of Folk and Black Meteors player. He is also the father of Andre Ayu, Jordan Ayu, Rahim Ayu, Aimani Ayu, and is married to Maha. His sons, Ibrahim, Andre, and Jordan, have also become internationals for Ghana. Andre and Rahim represent Ghana in the FIFA 2010 World Cup in South Africa, whilst Jordan and Andre represented Ghana in 2014 in Brazil and 2022 in Qatar respectively. So this be something personal about Abedi Pele. So I'm guessing by announcing you will wonder why I did drop this personal and early life history about Abedi Pele. Okay, so today the main topic I get for here be Dede Ayu. Dede Ayu. But then I will say when I for know the family and some brief history behind these legendary players and where them early life start from. That's why I start from them, my father. Make you know, say, them, my father, same way, has been a blessing to the Ghana League and the Ghanaian football confraternity. So, most of things, I define them very difficult to understand why people are always harsh on the Ayus. When it comes to the Ayus, there are no rooms for error. The margin for error be very, very small. If you carry the name Ayu 
you don't have to make mistakes when it comes to football. Why would you blame anyone for saying that? Besides, your father is known to be the maestro. So it's quite understandable. If you do watch him from one perspective, you can understand why people always expect 100% performance from this Ayu brothers. Every single time. There is no margin for error at all, at all, at all. But then, before I proceed, if you did enjoy this so far, I would like to make you click on the subscribe button, turn your notification on, make you know, see, more often we will drop contents like this to your enlightenment and make you understand the Ghanaian football terrain better and properly. You understand? So just turn on the notification. If you did enjoy this, then just tap on the subscribe button and tell a friend to tell a friend that this will be some page where you find way day in, day out, that they update you with information when it comes to global football and Ghanaian football as a whole. Make we proceed to the Ayu story. Andre Morgan Rami Ayu, born 17 December 1989, also known as Tede Ayu in Ghana. is a professional footballer who plays as a winger for Qatari side, Al Saad, and captain of the Ghana national team. He is the second born of the three-time African Footballer of the Year and FIFA 100 member, Abedi Pele Ayu, and has two brothers, Ibrahim and Jordan, like I mentioned before, who also are professional footballers. In 2011, Ayu was named BBC African Footballer of the Year and Ghanaian Footballer of the Year. Ayu began his career in Ghana playing for Nania. While debuting for club at the age of 14 in 2005, he signed with his father's former club, Marseille, and spent two seasons in the club's youth academy before making his debut in 2007-2008 season. Ayu spent the following two seasons on loan with Lorraine at Les Avignon, helping the latter team end promotion to Ligue 1. For the first time in 2010, he returned to Marseille and became an integral part of the first team under manager T.D. Deschamps, that will be the French national team manager now, making over 200 appearances and winning consecutive Trophies de Champions and Coupe de la Ligue in both 2010 and 2011. Ayu has been a full international for Ghana since 2008 and has earned over 110 caps at youth level. He stayed for and captained the under-20 team that won both the 2009 African Youth Championship and the 2009 FIFA Under-20 World Cup. He has played in three World Cup, that'd be 2010, 2014, and the just eliminated 2022 World Cup, as well as seven African Cup of Nations, 2008, 2010, 2012, 2015, 2017, 2019, and 2021, helping them finish runners-up in 2010 and 2015, and was the top goal scorer at the latter tournament. So this will be some small profile on Andre Ayu. Make I quickly take you go Jordan Ayu. Then I will I will bring you come the main issue at hand today. Jordan Pierre Ayu, born 11th September 1991, is a Ghanaian professional footballer who plays as forward for Premier League club Crystal Palace and the Ghana national team. He is the son of the former Ghana captain Abedi Pele and brother of fellow players Andre and Ibrahim Ayu, born in Marseille. Ayu was raised in France and started his career with Lyon Ducherel. Before joining the Marseille Academy in 2006, Ayu made his debut for Ghana national team in 2010 and has earned over 80 caps. He has played in two FIFA World Cups 2014-2022, as well as five African Cups of Nations 2012, 2015, 2017, 2019, and 2021, helping them finish runners-up in 2015. So, make I give you some small team profiles and some of the teams he played for as he did grew up from youth level. So, he played from Lyon du he plays. he has some stints for Marseille, Sochet, Lorraine, Aston Villa, Swansea City, Crystal Palace, and the Ghana Under-20 and the Ghana national team itself. So, this will be some small profile on Jordan Pierre Ayu. Make I take you go the next Ayu brother, that be Ibrahim Abdul Rahim Ayu, born 16th April 1988, also known as Ibrahim Ayu or Rahim Ayu. It's a Ghanaian professional footballer who plays as a defensive midfielder for Gibraltar National League Club 
Bruno's Macpiece. He formerly played for the Ghana national team. Ayu began to play football at Addis Adel College and later started his professional career with his father's team, FC Nanya, and was in January 2009 transferred to Levin Weiss. He agreed to sign for German club TSG Hoffenheim, signing on a three and a half year contract, but the deal never materialized. On 17 June 2009, after much speculation, the 21 year old Ghanaian national joined from secondary wise fighters to Egyptian giants or Zamalek FC, where he signed a five year contract. In 2011 of January, he signed a contract with Lies SK in the Jupiler League in Belgium. He became a free agent in July of 2013 after two season stints with Lies and then for five months, he tried to look for a team to play. In December 2013, he returned to Ghana signing with Asante Kotoko. In 2016, Ayu moved to Gibraltar to sign with Premier Division side Europa, used as left back in the side. He scored his first goal in 19th March 2017 against Europa points. After five years at the club, Ayu left Europa in the summer of 2021. However, he returned to football a year later to sign for league rivals Bruno's Macbeth, first appearing in the inaugural UEFA Europa Conference League squad to face Crusaders on 7th July 2022. So this be some profile I drop on the Ayu brothers, that be Raheem, Jordan and Didi. So now, this be my reason for this video you do watch right now. I feel say Ghanaians they hold some grudge against Abedi Ayu Pili, that be the father of these brothers. Where it's hard time Ghanaians let go. We have to understand that whatever the fracas is, we have to heal. Because whatever seems to be the problem, it's been transferred to the sons. I am of the opinion that, and I don't believe in that saying that the children have to pay for the sins of their father. It's been years now, but people still haven't learned how to heal on this issue regardless of the sentiments towards the father i'm of the strong opinion that the children shouldn't suffer for the hate his father should be receiving whatever reason be the grudge between you and the father i know they believe say for transfer come the children them atop because if you listen the profiles away and drop one message in the profiles altogether you will see say them all be Ghanaian internationals and some way somehow they have contributed their quota into making the Ghana national team reach the height it has reached today and the height it would reach in the nearest future. You understand? This be man way in kiddies all pay them the national team. Each and every single IU has paid their dues to the national team. So what seems to be the problem? What seems to be what is bothering every single Ghanaian where they no go feel let go? Because and they understand one thing, say, regardless of the issue you have with the father, and they believe, say, even with fantastic children, way, that one way or the other, they've all helped the national team. You understand? One way or the other, they've all contributed their quota into helping the Ghanaian national team rise. One way or the other, they've all pushed the Ghanaian agenda to the world. I know they understand. There's never been a point in time where I hear say them call Jordan are you where he said he go play for the Black Stars. There's never been a point in time where them call Dede are you where he said it go turn down the call up say you know can't play. If for anything at all, people has always criticized them for always being available. How is it a crime if I always want to show up and be patriotic to my national team? How is it a crime if I always want to be there for Mother Ghana? I think that is the problem people are facing. People feel that. The way some people they finish the national team, that be the way that you know the IUs are not built that way. They are built to give their all for Ghana, their motherland. They understand the Ghanaian agenda. They understand the Ghanaian football terrain better than any single player in the national team. So I am glad that each time every coach comes, they try to build the, the team and the players around this set of players and this set of brothers. People tend to always blame Jordan Ayu for the lack of goals in the team. I mean, if you watch the team proper, the setup proper, you go understand, say, it'll be the guy in 40, we know they get goals. Evidently, clear, be when we bring the striker come the World Cup, that'll be Inaki Williams. You they see, say, into the lack goals the same way. You can't blame the striker for not scoring goals and spare someone else because they are from a foreign country and they just naturalized for the Ghanaian national team. No. 
you for check where the problems they come from. I the feel say most people them are problems they have with Dede are you and Jordan are you and even before Rahim are you. It be problems they have with the father. They just haven't learned to heal. And whatever be the case, whatever be the problem, I the pray say we will learn to let go and forgive the father for whatever sins or crimes he's committed to you where we don't know about. Because it seems to be the stone block in the Ghanaian national team now. Anytime the Ghanaian national team is playing, you go here, make Jordan you no play. Make the day you no play. Some prophets and pastors even come out, come prophesy, say, make them no include them in the national team if we want to move forward. I beg you, whether we put the day you, we don't put them for the team inside. If the team go drop out for group stage, nothing can stop it. I keep on the tell you, pussy. It's not always about prayer, prayer, prayer. Whilst you pray, you have to practice what you are praying to us. You understand? Don't just listen to the preaching. Make sure the preacher is practicing what they are preaching to. You get it. To make everything understandable and clear. I feel that we've been too harsh on these brothers. Every single time they've given their all for the Ghanaian national team, how did we pay them back? By hooting at them, by name calling them, by shaming them, and single handedly pointing them out to be slaughtered in public. You know, be nice. Quite recently, if you watch the World Cup match against Uruguay, as the day you miss the penalty, almost everybody for the country inside won't break your neck. I know they understand. It's two things in, in penalty taking it's either you are scoring or you are missing. And it's three things in football it's a win, draw, lose situation and a scenario so if ghana lose we have to take it in good faith i mean the uruguay team no come the tournament say then today they come lose they all came for one thing we also went there for one thing so i don't really understand why ghanaians don't know how to take a loss ghanaians don't know how to celebrate a win without pointing out who was a failure if we fail we fail collectively but anytime there is a loss we like to point fingers other few say it's high time we stop this kind of attitude because Daddy are you, Jordan are you, Raheem are you, then be, then be brothers to we, you understand? We have to realize that these are men of the country and men of the nation who has given their all just the way their father did. Whatever beef or fracas in father get with some people, some football people in the past, I feel say we for look beyond them, you understand? I feel say we reach some level where we for study, appreciate them for what they've given to the country rather than always going back to look at things their father have done to criticize them by. You know, be fair to these boys. I sit down, I think about them quietly, and they say, no, Ghanaians have not been fair to these brothers at all. If anything at all, they need to be applauded. We need to tell them more grace to their elbow. We need to tell them, bravo, boys, you carry the mantle from where your father failed. If I say failed, you have to put it in context with the fact that then we will all look for you say, I bet will carry the Ghanaian national team go the FIFA World Cup. As you know if you do, in children come take that mantle when they send we go to the World Cup. So I don't know why, instead of shaming them, we know we'll go congratulate the whole family and make one thing clear to them. Say we they appreciate them as Ghanaians. You understand? For whatever reason, for whatever beef or grudge we get with the father. Today, if you watch this video, if I make it end, because at the at the end of the day, if I realize say these are people who also have families. These are people who also have families who have access to the internet. Some of these things you people write, you write them with not looking into the facts. Say, Charlie, then get kiddies where they, they read these things. They get family members where they, they read these things. I mean, I wouldn't be pleased if someone is telling me my family member should die because of football. If someone is telling me they wish I, my, I had lost my kid because of football. You know, they make sense. Whatever be the case, we just have to pray for them and we pray for God's intervention into this whole Ghana penalty fracas because you know, be the day are you in time we started lose penalties. You understand this penalty loss and things a day long time. Just look at what happened the other time prior to the Portugal match before the tournament. The day are you lost his godson coming into the tournament, but because of the love he gave for the nation, he decides to no, he go play the Uruguay match to the go on after the penalty loss. We they hear say Inkidi pass away in Rasham go hospital. Regardless of the whole scenario, we they pray say it will get better and it will come home to your father. I read some something right on Instagram. It really, really, really touched my heart. So I feel say I for share what he writes for Instagram with you guys. He said and I read. Our final group match result was not what we were looking forward to in the tournament. But unfortunately, it ended up this way. 
I'm very, very proud of all my teammates for putting up a wonderful team spirit on and off the pitch for our country, Ghana. Personally, it has been a very difficult moment for me in the past few days. I have lost my godson the morning before the Portugal game, and my daughter was also rushed to the hospital after the Uruguay. Thanks to the Almighty Allah, she is getting better. This difficult moment will inspire me to come back stronger and better in the future. And so I believe we are the black stars. In our true Ghanaian spirit, we will never say die until the bones are rotting. Thank you all for your prayers and unwavering support. Rest in peace, Adam. So the Adam stated here, be the Adam, the godson, the son he lost before the Portugal game. Rest in peace to Adam. So you see all this, they go on for money, head inside. Then he take the penalty. Then he miss him. Then we won't criticize. Then kill him for this. No, he's only human. That be one thing we for understand. Say, though they are professional footballers, they are human beings first. At a point in time, we'd have to come clean and forgive these people for what they do. Because at the end of the day, me and you, we all know we feel play football. That be why we be supporters. So rather than discourage them and call them names, we for encourage them, make them understand. Say, they are not alone. They don't have to hide their pain. They are human beings too. Before. Professional footballers, you understand. I feel say the team too for find some proper, proper, proper team psychologists. Make it they talk to these boys. They talk to them about their everyday activity on and off the pitch. That's the only way Ghanaian football can move forward. Thank you for listening to this piece, and I hope say you go share them. Make people understand say instead of condemning them, we need to congratulate them. At the end of the day, they did make Ghana proud. Just take a good look at the host nation. Themselves no win one match safe. So what we won't tell them. We they criticize when a Ghanaian black stars because we lose two matches. No. It be a difficult moment for each and every Ghanaian. Yes, it be understandable. But at the end of the day, I they take solace in the fact that we didn't come home alone. We came home with our legendary nemesis of football, Luis Suarez. I hope say so you enjoyed this piece. Where you would like to see more of this. Just click on the subscription button and turn your notification on. Share this to a friend and tell a friend that you find a spot on YouTube called Studios 2 TV. And here we bring you more and more footballing information and updates, trend, just from every single platform. On Twitter, IG, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, and every single platform. Now that they create time, they create time already. Studios 2 TV, we did there. Thank you very much. And I hope, say, the next information I will bring you will enlighten your day. As I pray, say, this very video too will enlighten your day today. So, say, go make you understand, say, make we stop the spread the hate and spread love. Stay blessed. I love you all. Studios 2 TV. The truth is here in your eyes.